and welcome to Melodies of Life. I'm your host, Anna Enka. Today's episode is about overcoming your addiction. For most people, it is impossible to face the journey alone. People who think, who are waking up to the fact that you don't have to have a drinking problem for drinking can be a problem. Alcohol is the only drug on earth that we have to justify not taking. Being sober allows you to be the person you were trying to be while you were drinking. It is important to always treat addicts with dignity, love, and compassion, even if they are defiant. To understand the origins of addiction, we need to understand subdiction. In your brain, we have the amygdala that deals with emotion, impulses, and instinct. It is also referred to as the desire center, and it's also a primary dopamine driver, the favorite for many people. There is a powerful relationship between dopamine and addictive behaviors. It is sometimes called the system one thinking, that is a fast survival mentality processing area where you emotionally react before you think. Think of it as a term of a prey versus predator in the wild. It is a primitive response to life. In system two is where you think before reacting. That's the difficult one. Here you are governed, balanced, and you have an objective processing area. And also things that are most important that you value, that um, you are most likely to pursue, you will have the drive from within to do it. Anything that supports your values, you will see as good, like food and pray, and have a seeking impulse or addiction towards. The things that you have a low value on, you will avoid, procrastinate, hesitate, and frustrate on, and you will need outside motivation to do it. Anything you perceive as a challenging of your values, you will see as bad, predator, or something that can eat you. Then you will have an avoiding instinct, subdictions away from. The more extreme your infatuation towards what you seek, the more extreme your resentment of it opposite, which you will try to avoid. So let's take a look. I know this is really complex today, but have the patience and follow me here because this is a really important session for us to learn If you are infatuated with a person's intelligence, right, you will equally avoid a person you perceive to be ignorant. If you are infatuated with a woman you perceive to be healthy and have an amazing toned body, you will equally avoid and likely be repulsed by a woman you perceive as being overweight and unhealthy. The same applies to your own perception of yourself. You will not have one perception consciously without the equal and opposite perception unconsciously in your mind. Whatever it is that you seek, you will repel its opposite. As an example, people who are frequently shopping and they spend money, right? They shop and consume the things that they want and avoid and rebel repel the bills like they hate when they see that credit card statement coming in the end of the month and they're like oh my god did I spend all this money the addiction is the act of shopping and the subdiction is the death that comes with the credit card purchase and you do not have the money to pay in the end of the month some people become addicted to another individual or they're like in a relationship and they fear losing them or to be without them So you may also recall that you resented or looked down on somebody because you were too proud to admit that what you saw in them is inside of you. So you wanted to avoid them. Uh, You did not want to rely on them. Instead, you stood on your own feet and you became independent. We tend to become dependent on what we perceive to support our values and independent on what we perceive to be challenging to us. Anytime you see something that you perceive to be prey, you will accelerate your adrenaline to run and capture it. Anytime you see what you perceive to be a predator, you will accelerate your adrenaline to avoid it. When you are in a survival, you tend to accelerate and create subjective confirmation bias and discomfort 
confirmation bias. As a result, you have a false attribution bias of credits towards something you perceive is prey and a false attribution bias of blame away from something that you perceive is predator. When you perceive more support, more positive, more negatives, more similarities than differences, more advantages than disadvantages, you will wake up that addictive or seeking side of you. When you perceive more drawbacks than benefit, more negative than positive, more loss than gain, more differences than similarities, more disadvantages than advantages, you will create subdiction. My client, Sam, he's a gentleman who worked with me, had been diagnosed with an alcoholic addiction, a label that has been given to him for many, many, many years ago, and he truly believed that he was. Um, I traced his addiction way back when he was a child living with his dad, who drank enormous amount of alcohol. His mother had left his dad because of it, and, and Sam... His father was like very, very strict and he was always very loud and always using a very loud voice in his daily communication to his son or whoever was present around them. And uh, <clears throat> because the mom left, the dad had forced Sam to fulfill all the roles in the house that his mother had previously done around the house. So he had to like clean the house, watch over his younger siblings and do the grocery shopping, cooking food, etc., which is not the norm for a child at that age. So anytime Sam rebelled against his father, um, he would get beaten until he was black and blue. In that process, Sam developed an avoidance reaction away from his father and the parts of him that he truly hated. One night, when Sam was old enough to stand up for himself, but still underage in terms of driving a car, Sam took the keys to his father's truck. And one night, when he was very drunk and totally passed out, he picked up his friend and they went drinking together. On their way home, they were in a major, major car accident, and his friend was killed instantly. Sam's father came to the hospital and was furious and essentially told Sam to never come home again. That was the moment Sam became dependent on alcohol, just like his father, even though it was a quality that he despised in him. I explained to Sam that what he was avoiding and had a subaddiction to becoming like his father, he also had an addiction to getting the opposite, like his freedom and the idea that his father could not control his alcohol intake. So he ended up becoming an alcoholic. That was the label. So we dissolved his emotional baggage and his unconscious perception by asking specific questions that when answered, it helped him balance the uh, mathematical equation of his perspective, which was the source of all his emotions. I helped Sam to become conscious of the beliefs um, and actually conscious of the benefits of some of his father's action that at that point he did not see anything and he had labeled them as only being drawbacks to him. He had only seen the drawbacks of his father, but never the benefits. So when approaching that, he was really upset and said to me, there is no benefit and he's very close minded in his thinking. So Sam had also seen that the benefits of the alcohol, but not the drawbacks with that. So Sam had a very skewed uh, subjective bias on both ends. That is very difficult. And that's what most people have. So together, we looked at the upside of what his father had done. And it's not an easy thing to do uh, because th that is something he had never done or no one has ever asked him to look for. So by asking Sam the following question, like, 
what were the upsides? What were the advantages? And how did it serve you? It's like questions that we not uh, know how to answer because at that moment we don't think like that. So after balancing him out, we also found um, who was playing the opposite role to his father at the same time because we can't have one without the other. So it showed up that the same neighbor had protected him and tried to help him out as much as possible, especially when his father was not around. So we transformed his um, ingratitude by transforming his perceptions of things. Together we dissolved the subduction and the thing he was escaping, the guilt associated with the loss of his friend being killed, and once we neutralize the subdiction and his reasons for escaping and this disassociating from the experience, his desire from alcohol disappeared. Uh, and in the end of working with me, he only had tears and gratitude for his father. And not many people understand that if an in individual is drinking or taking drugs, they are unconsciously or consciously perceiving to be more advantages than disadvantages, even if it may be destroying their lives, affecting their health, or damaging the relationships they have, or even creating financial instability, in their mind, there is still more advantages than disadvantages to continue the action that the therapists out there label as an addiction. One of the most important tools in the addiction process is that I help people identify their highest values. And why we do that is because if you don't fill your day with things that are meaningful to you, you will fill them up with things that aren't, like overeating, drugs, alcohol, gambling, sex, anything that stimulates your dopamine because you are unfulfilled in what's deeply valuable to you and you have subconsciously stored sub addictions. Are you ready to go inwards and do the work that would clear your blockage, clarify your vision and how you want your life to be and to rewire and balance your mind? You have found the right place to start. Visit my website, Anna Anka Wellness, use my code PODCASTAA and you will get your first sessions for $100. If you have any questions while listening, please subscribe and leave your comments and you will receive an answer to your specific question. Please hit the subscribe button so you never miss an episode and if you love it, please give me a review and share it. That will allow me to impact people worldwide. Thank you for listening. Love always, Anna.